Today I'm going to talk about testing electrolytic capacitors with an analog meter. This is going to be like a quick and dirty test. What this test is going to show, it's going to basically indicate if the capacitor has a short, is open, or it has excessive leakage. Now the test is more reliable if it's done out of circuit, but in a pinch it can be done in circuit. If you do do it in circuit, you got to be aware that any parallel resistances are really going to throw off your readings. So the first thing I want to do is to discharge the capacitor. I'm just going to do it with a little alligator test clip set up here. This is actually not the right way to do it. This is like how we used to do it back in the day. In fact, I remember using screwdrivers to do this, like we when we change out the capacitors on televisions, and sometimes it might make a little pow sound. This is how I did it, do it. And ideally, you could get you something like this, a little alligator test clip thing. Cut it here in the middle, and then solder in a resistor. The resistor can't have too low of, of resistance. You can't. I wouldn't use like a a one ohm resistor or something like that. But it also you don't want one to have like you don't want like a, a hundred thousand ohm resistor or something like that because then it would take like forever to discharge. So you might want to take something like you know at least a. I don't think I would use for example a an eighth of a watt resistor, a quarter watt resistor. I'd at least use a, a watt or more or two, three watts and have at least um, I would say a thousand ohms or so and then just solder that in there and then that way you can probably safely discharge capacitors. So here we go. I got my FET volt ohmmeter turned on and I got in the ohms position. I I always start out with the highest range. In this case, it's one times one meg, one times one million ohms. And then I connect the the minus lead to the minus lead of the meter to the minus lead on the capacitor. You can see there's a big minus on there. And the positive lead goes to positive lead of the ohmmeter goes to the positive lead of the capacitor and now what should happen is the needle here should swing down and then swing back up according to theory okay went down And now it should, it's in the highest range, so it should slowly, slowly come up. In fact, it's moving, but like really, really slow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and discharge the capacitor and use the next highest range. That way, it'll be able to be seen better. Okay, here we are with the next highest range, and that is R times 100,000. So I discharge it again in the meantime. Now the meter should go over to the left and then climb back up. Now, with a capacitor this size, if the this is a one 100 microfarad capacitor, if it would be stay in this position, then the capacitor would be open. And if it would go all the way over to the left and not come back up, then we can reasonably conclude that it's shorted. Or if it would go down and then stop at some kind of a low value, oh, there it goes. 
and it's moving. I think what I'll do now is I'll go even a little bit lower with the range. Discharge again and then go lower. Now I'm on the R times 10 ohm meter range. Okay, again I have to observe the polarity. And then connect. There it goes. Now it should go all the way to the right and then stay there. If, for example, like it went down and it stayed like halfway up the middle, you might have a problem with, with leakage, say if it was stayed at, for example, um, let's say you're at 50 or 50,000 ohms or something like that. So I can reasonably, reasonably conclude that this capacitor is okay. Now I'm going to take a capacitor that's a little bit larger then I'll take a smaller one. So this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor. I'm going to do my quick little discharge here. So it did that. I'm just going to leave it in the R times 10 range. Sometimes you got to fiddle around with it and figure out the right range. Hook it up and then again the needle should go down. You know, actually capacitor should charge and then discharge. So there it goes. And it should be moving over. Which it actually is. I've been, I've increased I mean excuse me, I've decreased the resistance now, but the range is lower and the faster it's going. The faster it's actually uh, discharging. My next test is going to be with a 2.2 microfarad capacitor. And same thing, I got to discharge this thing. And I've got my ohms now, I think, on back on R times 100,000. Um, see, I gotta hook this up right. Okay. And the needle should move over to the left and then go down and back up. You'll find that the smaller the capacitors are, the less it's gonna go, the less the needle's gonna go over. Okay. And it's doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, my last and final test. This is a 0.47 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. I already discharged it. It didn't have any charge on it anyways. So, I've got the... I'm going to put this back in the... Let's see. I'll have it here in the R times... 100k range and let me do connect it yep there it goes it went up it you saw the needle moving a little bit if I the smaller capacitors I'm going to be trying out the less needle is going to be moving and like I said if it if it if it goes if it goes down if it goes down and it stays there then, then you've definitely got a problem. So again, what we're looking for is we want to see, once we make the connection, we want to see that needle. We want to see it jump over to the left here. Once it basically kick over to the left and then come back up. Now they're not all going to go, it's not going to go all the way down in all cases and then back up.
So, try that again. There it goes going down. And then kick, well, kind of kick down kind of slowly. And then now it's slowly coming back up. And of course, it's by decrease the resistant range, the faster things are going to go. Ideally, you'd want to do this maybe in conjunction with using something like this. Or some people, they even have ESR meters. 